The couple spent years constructing the four-bedroom, four-bathroom house in the woods, making sure it was the fairest of them all by implementing handcrafted doors, carved wooden beams, and stained glass windows. The house is definitely fit for. It's not. It's not bad, but. I, 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 that house it was sick. It was sick. No doubt. I, I would definitely um pay, I would definitely pay nine hundred and, and twenty five thousand dollars just to own live in that house. Hello, Jay. We asked you, cartoon house that you really didn't know that actually really exists in real life. Like you probably walk past a couple of houses. And you didn't really know that that you look in SpongeBob, then look at the houses. You didn't really know that it actually really real. From sentient sponges to talking animals, and even, even families, families financially supporting themselves off of a single salary, cartoons are full of weird and wonderful things that can't possibly exist in the real world. However, the line between fiction and reality isn't as solid as you think, and some cartoon enthusiasts have taken it upon themselves to blur it by creating real versions of the buildings from their favorite cartoons. There are plenty of iconic homes in the world of animation, and today we're going to make your childhood dreams come true by looking at fairy tale cottages, SpongeBob themed hotel rooms, and Disney Fine Digs, as I show you around some cartoon houses that you won't believe exist in real life. Alright, hey, hey, let's just see. So right now, you're about to blow my mind right now. The Simpsons Residence. When it comes to cartoon buildings, no home is more iconic than 742 Evergreen Terrace. Two story house home. If you ask you me a representation of the Simpsons house, for real, I want to know where I can find. I want to know where I can find and go to it. Cause you make it perfect. That ten out of ten, and you, and you make it real, realistic. Ten out of ten. The loudest, yellowest, yellowest and most famous, famous family, family on television. On television. The, the Simpsons. Simpsons. Now everyone knows that the Simpsons live in a small town called Springfield. But back in 1997, Pepsi and Fox joined forces with a construction company called Kaufman and Broad to build a real version of the family's iconic house in a different American town, Henderson, Nevada. The house was created as part of a giveaway that aimed to give one lucky fan the chance to own the iconic home, and Kaufman and Broad spared no expense making it identical to the one in the show. Before yeah, starting the project, the architects got like, to um, kick their feet up and no, crack open a can of duff the, uh, as they were tasked with watching over 100 episodes of The Simpsons to make the replica right as that, accurate as possible. To think, I've been watching The Simpsons for free all these years. What a schmuck. Anyway, all this binge watching paid off, and when the house was finally built, the attention to detail was staggering. Featuring corn patterned right, curtains, right, brightly colored to... furniture, and over 1,500 no themed props scattered throughout the property. In fact, the only real difference between the recreation and the original is the fact that the chimney is fake. After all, Springfield may have battled snowstorms, heat waves, and tornadoes, but the weather in Henderson is a bit more consistent. And you hardly need a roaring fire when you live in a Nevada desert. Once the house was built, Pepsi released commercials explaining that each purchase of their product would enter the buyer into a raffle for the $150,000 home. In December 1997, the winner of the giveaway was announced as Barbara Howard, a 63-year-old factory worker from Richmond, Kentucky. Pepsi were excited to announce that a winner had been found, but unfortunately, Barbara told them to eat her shorts, opting to take a cash prize of $75,000 instead of moving into the Simpsons' house. It would be cool to live in a Tesla cartoon house, but... I would rather just take the money, but will you want to live in a cartoon house forever and ever, or will you just take the money? I, for me, I would just take the money. Got the best money and use the money for it, whatever. 
At, this, at point, this point, the property stood, stood vacant for a few years, years until 2001 when somebody bought it and removed all, all the Simpsons memorabilia and decor, and turning it into a regular, unremarkable house. Oh, come on. Now, I can understand how all that cartoonish decor might be a little headache-inducing after a while. Hey, caramba, what a waste. Oh, Pepsi, Fox, and oh, Kaufman oh, and Brad put oh, a lot oh, of time, money, oh, and effort into the giveaway. Oh, the event was a resounding failure, proving that nobody actually wants to live in a cartoon world. Though when you see what certain characters would look like in real life, like this creation of Mr. Burns by Nelson Cooper Design Studio, it's probably for the best. There's only one appropriate reaction to that horrific scene. I, 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 I might end up freaking out if I saw that. Two Bikini Bottom and Back. Kaufman and Brown did a great job rebuilding the Simpsons house, but 742 Evergreen Terrace is a pretty standard American home, and some cartoon buildings are harder to create in real life. With that in mind, let's move on to one of the craziest characters and homes in animation, as I ask you the age-old question, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's Sponge yeah, 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 yeah. Now, at first glance, building SpongeBob's Pineapple Palace in real life seems impossible. But if you head to Queensland, Australia, you'll find yourself momentarily transported to Bikini Bottom. When you come across a roadside attraction that looks just like Mr. Squarepants' home. The aptly named Big Pineapple is a 52-foot replica of the tropical fruit that was built back in 1971, long before the sponge graced our screens. The structure looks just like SpongeBob's house, but unfortunately, the giant pineapple is just a sculpture, and all you'll find inside the supersized fruit is stairs to the top of the structure, instead of furniture in a snail named Gary. You can't, you can't actually live, actually live inside, inside the giant, giant tourist attraction, attraction but not, fear not, there is a version of SpongeBob's home that's fully habitable. The Pineapple Villa in the Dominican Republic is a luxury version of SpongeBob's home that's officially run by Nickelodeon hotels and resorts. On the outside, the villa looks like a futuristic version of a pineapple. On the inside, it's the spitting image of SpongeBob's home. The villa features all the furniture and decorations you see on the TV show, as well as two spacious bedrooms and a private garden with a large pool. Like a pineapple, this hotel suite is pretty damn sweet. But if you want to stay at the 2300 square foot villa, you're going to have to start working extra shifts at the Krusty Krab. As a visit to the luxury resort will cost you $3,800 Three thousand eight hundred dollars. Holy! Oh, that's a lot of sand dollars. Before we return to the surface, let's stay in Bikini Bottom, checking out another building from the bottom of the sea. If you've ever watched the show, then you'll know that when SpongeBob isn't at home playing with Gary, he's usually at work frying Krabby Patties at the Krusty Krab. SpongeBob's place of work is arguably just as iconic as his house, and in 2014, a group of restauranteurs decided to build a real-life version of the famous restaurant in Ramallah, Palestine. Just like its cartoon counterpart, the restaurant is modeled on a giant wooden crab trap that's decorated with nautical flags and a net on the window. Inside, the restaurant features all the maritime furniture seen in the show, boasting tables made out of ship wheels and counters modeled on rowboats. The, the nautical themed menu includes kelp juice, a seafood salad, and of course, the restaurant's own take on the famous Krabby Patty. They still won't reveal the burger's secret ingredient, though. Mm, sorry, Plankton. SpongeBob's Pineapple and Mr. Krabs Restaurant aren't the only buildings from Bikini Bottom that have been brought to life. Back in 2020, a Redditor called Venus Marmalade was driving through Palatine Bridge, New York, when they passed this distinctive structure. The bright blue Easter Island head looks pretty out of place in this American field, so it stood out to the Redditor who immediately identified it as the home of SpongeBob's curmudgeonly neighbor Squidward Tentacles, whose iconic home has been the subject of many an impressive fan homage over the years. Upon closer inspection to the one spotted in Palatine Bridge, the 15-foot-tall roadside attraction doesn't contain furniture or insulation, so the structure, built by Charlie Nugent, is actually more of a sculpture than a house you can live in. But who wants to break the bad news to the real-life Squidward enthusiasts out there? <laughs> Not me. Disney Digs 
Let's float, Let's float from the bottom of the sea, of the sea to, the to the sky as, as we look, look at a cartoon, cartoon house, house that's done. known oh, for flying through the clouds. When Pixar's Up was really released in 2009, it showed us two things. One, a kid's movie can make a grown man cry in the first five minutes. And two, if you tie around 10,000 balloons to the roof of a house, it can fly into the air. No, 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 it can't. Don't, don't believe what he's saying. Please don't believe. Don't, don't go on, on top of your roof, make a mill, a million balloon on top of your roof, and, and soon it's gonna float. Cause that's not gonna happen. Maybe, 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 I don't know. It might, it might happen, might. But, don't do it. Can vouch, can vouch for that, for that first fact, fact. But, unfortunately, but unfortunately, scientists, scientists say, that say that the physics behind Up's flying house are a little, little, little bit off. And you need several million, million helium, helium balloons to make, to make an average house fly in real life. This, this disappointing fact means that building Carl's flying house in real life is practically impossible. But that didn't stop the team at Van Girder's Builders from constructing a ground-bound replica of the home in Harriman, Utah, back in 2011. Aside from the lack of balloons, the house is a near-perfect replica of Pixar's home, featuring its multicolored exterior, a hand-painted mural in the living room, and Carl and Ellie's custom letterbox sitting out in the front yard. The house is the ultimate piece of memorabilia, and in 2012, a Pixar fanatic called Lynette Hamblin bought it for $399,000 before moving to Harriman with her family. Lynette has described the home as her dream house, and incredibly, 